Hi everybody, here's Christian, and this is Team Warcast. This is Shepard experiencing what can only be described as existential terror. <laughs> it's Cthulhu, and we're ready to pump up the jam, pump it up. <laughs> we're all saints on my screen. It's kind of awesome. Yeah, we're pumping yeah, we're, we're, pretty, pretty we're relatively, well. We're relatively synced here, too. Alright, so uh, this is uh, our let's play of Monster Hunter Generation, and we are embarking on another quest to fight a monster. Yep. We're going to do a uh, quest is the Hyper Investigation, mm -hmm. and we're going to hunt a Yin Kaku. It's from the Chief Researcher. We've been receiving reports of fierce monsters in the area that give off a dark red glow. Verifying this information, and also take care of the Yin Kaku spotted in the same area. This is like a little anticlimactic because like we've already beaten up like much more difficult hyper monsters. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you guys remember the first time you fought a hyper monster? Oh, yeah. On this podcast, yes. Okay. I did it when it was just Monster Hunter Cross. Mm hmm And like you know, having played the game spoiler free and all that, like I show up in a room, a high rank room, some guy posts a cut coup. I'm like, all right, you like, whatever. I got this. <laughs> whatever. I got this. I show up, the thing starts, like, glowing and flashing and spinning, and, like, we're beating on it for, like, 30 minutes until it dies. Like, what the hell was that? <laughs> That's the part I, I really like about it. I mean, some people yeah. don't mind spoilers in their Monster Hunter, but, like, if I were to sit down and watch, like, you know, attack fights with monsters, like, exclusively beforehand, like, you don't get to learn anything about fighting them. Yeah. It's fun, fun being able to learn. Yeah. Um... Speaking of learning, Shepard and Cthulhu yeah. as well. You guys, you guys played a new game. Yeah. No, there's no new games. It, there's. It, it's, it's April. <laughs> games are dead. The games are dead. <laughs> um. Well, probably by the time people are watching this, it won't be that. You know, but, no, uh, no, I, we I'm, have some huge backlog. It's, it's... Uh, welcome to 2018, guys. We're still uh, talking about uh, <laughs> Persona. Assuming you're talking about Persona 5, yeah. Skill Your Heart Edition. Yeah. Premium. Yeah. Skill Case version for, for PlayStation 4, which apparently is as nearly identical to its PlayStation 3 counterpart as you can get as being on a next yeah. generation console. Yeah. Which, I mean, you know. All right. I guess. I don't know. I mean, it's, and it's, the graphics, the, the graphics to Persona, the, the, just don't really necessitate the extra like processing power. There's got to really. be a slight difference. I want to see a digital foundry. Yeah, on the sprite bit. I think I've got about 25 hours into it right now, wow. which would, in most games, like you would have completed it once or two times over. But for me, that just means like you know, I'm two months in. How, uh, to, well, can you give me like an game. idea, like w how many months is this the game? I don't know, because I haven't beaten it. But I'm thinking, like I don't know, maybe a year. Okay. Yeah, it's it's it's, I think it's somewhere between like six months to a year. I think. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's I a think year it's, though. Yeah, it's it's gonna be um, it's gonna be a long game. I get that feeling. So, I get that feeling in it for the long haul. And when I get that feeling. Yeah, which is good. I mean, hey, I mean, that's. I'd rather have more game than than less. I suppose. Yeah, of course, of course. So, can you can you give like a short like introduction of what it is? Because I played Persona Four, and I loved Persona Four, especially yeah. for the writing. The writing was super smart for a, so, some, so how, some random video game. How far back do you want me to go back into the history of Mega Ten? Or no, do you just I just want me to talk like, to you about the history of Persona, or like, just the history starting with Persona Three. Just yeah, just whatever, wherever you think it might might make sense. Because also you have to keep in mind that you know we don't have too much time. Just give us. We're like gonna a be killing this kaku pretty quickly. Okay, yeah. so this is you know it's a it, it's there are always RPGs set in modern day Japan where you play as a high school student. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in these these worlds, um, you typically have the ability to manifest. Oh, nice. Ooh. Uh, the strength of like your your inner feelings through kind of like a quasi inner spirit power thing called persona. It's it's the one through stay of the game, and it's what they're all called persona. And that you know you're you're revealing your you know your your inner self. Yes. And there've been um, five six games, but really when when people talk about persona, they're talking about Persona Three or its re-released version, Persona Three Fest. 
Persona 4 or its re-released version, Persona 4 Golden or Persona 5. Mm. And it, what makes those games significantly different from everything else is you, in addition to going into these places and fighting monsters and, and trying to solve something, something's usually going on, there's some plot, um, you're managing the social links. And so these are like little stories within the stories where you meet people, talk to them, um, deepen your connection with them through whatever you know life problem they're having, and subsequently get more powerful because the stronger connection you form with them, the better you're able to strengthen personas that you're able to create. I mean, are, it's basically you know. like to me, it felt it's a lot like it's, it's Pokemon. It's Pokemon with a dating sim. Yeah, is if you what want it Pokemon is. with a dating sim, this is almost there. But if you ever <laughs> played Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, that is literally Pokemon with <laughs> Satan. Okay. <laughs> no, if you ever want, to, if you were ever playing Pokemon, saying like, "Damn, like this guy, this guy could use some like satanic influence." <laughs> Just Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, great okay. game. There's net. I've never played a game like that. To There's me? been multiple personas. There's only been <laughs> one Nocturne. And that is really, it is a masterpiece. It is available digitally on the PlayStation 3. And of course, it's a PS2 game. Still looks great. The art style is great. So, But um, Persona 5, yeah. fun, stylish. I mean, those games are like the epitome of style. Yeah, they you know, are. Between the music and, and the and visual to me, design. To me, like the social link stuff feels like it's, it's social links uh, sounds so complicated, but it kind of feels like Stardew Valley, like just basically getting hearts for like getting friends, like get, getting oh, people yeah. to know you and, and getting to know people and having like these these encounters with those people and, and learning something that, about them. For, for a lot of the characters, that's exactly what it is. You know, you'll go talk to them and then, you know, just by talking to them and you're making like stronger and getting more strength from it. It's a social awkwardness simulator. If like if you are not super socially awkward, you will also be able to become friends with them sooner. Like if you don't understand them well or you don't know what to say, you will advance a little bit slower in how well you know them. And the the problem with this is that the game is is time limited, hmm. you know, and that they, typically the, the the struggle in these games is not beating it necessarily but time management to be able to do everything that you want i mean there is a theoretical perfect playthrough you can do where you know playing from a brand new save you can go through and you know max out all of your social links and max out all of your personal stats and stuff like that but that's really hard to do so the question is being able to do all the things that you think you might want to do without without running out of time and so that's that part is actually something I really like, and it, to, be, to some extent, like the RPG part when you fight monsters, that's to be like the worst part of of the game. Uh, it depends. Depends how many. I mean, the the games are like they're hard. I mean, it's not like yeah, Final no, no, Fantasy. No, it's, it's, no, it's it's good. It's good fighting. Don't get me wrong, but it's yeah. Like to me, the most fun part is like the high school part where you, yeah, no, I mean, where you, no, I'm every at, day you uh, manage what, 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 how you're gonna spend your evening, afternoon, who, what kind of person are you gonna hang out with, what kind of food are you going to eat? Yeah, no, where, I, I'm you know, with you. I mean, you that's the stuff the you look forward to. Yeah. No, that's, like when when dungeons and stuff come up, like you're almost like a little pissed off. You're like, oh god, like yeah. I gotta do this. Yes. Like I, I want to hang, hang out. I want to hang out with my bros. I want to hang hang out with Kesuke and, and whatever. Yeah, Chie. She is the best. best. Waifu. She is best. She's all into that meat um, and kung fu. That's right. Yeah. So, um, so Persona Five now came out, and and that's what is the difference between Five and Four? Um, I mean, it takes place in Tokyo. Four took place in um, Ibuya, mm -hmm. um, which is like a small town. Japan, oh, no, but I mean, a lot, a lot of a lot of change in like the overall story. Like, oh, and the, the stories are always completely different. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, like I recommend people if they play Personas and and Pokemon, like the, the, the little little known gem. Seriously, hmm. let's not talk about Persona Five, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Okay, it is insane. <laughs> it is insane. Insane. Insane! It's it's the craziest thing I've ever played. I'm like, how did this game ever get created? Are we are we gonna see a let's play of you? There is a cameo I wanna, of I Dante from Devil May Cry. Oh my gosh! What the wanna hell? That's that's uh, a if there were okay. I, when that, I played that's one that's the one thing they do a lot though is they do a lot of 
lot of stuff like it that. It was 100 hours, I think, I, I, it took for me to play through it the first time. I might, I might be able, if I have any remaining knowledge, I might be able to finish it in 80. I don't know. I don't know if there's any Let's Plays of Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Hmm. If there are none, Shepard... I could maybe be the first. You could be the first. I, I just start every every no episode with Hail Satan. You know? Hail Satan. I don't I don't know if it's a spoil like there's just demons like everywhere just like everywhere everywhere it's like and they're they're evil they're terrible. Yeah. So that's what terrible. demons people, are. People get murdered. It's like it's actually maybe t time wise very topical. Take, takes place in a dystopian wasteland. But not like Fallout, like seriously, like the gates of hell opened up and like killed everyone. Huh. Welcome to Nocturne. Okay. So, um, yeah, maybe we're going to discuss this in the next episode as well. I hope you, you guys uh, tune in the next time as well. Wish you, as always, good luck and good hunt. You've got me looking now to see if there's an LP on this. I don't know that anyone would care to even watch it. Maybe they I, would. I, I don't know. I never heard about this. Squatty Potty. Who needs underwear when you never got poop? Brought to you by Squatty Potty.